Hello, everybody, and welcome to Mayday Media. Just pointing out some articles online. I've got a few of them here. This one here is kind of a funny one. Boeing wants to build a flying car. Well, yeah, I guess they might want to work on their planes first, I think. But while you're at it, like and subscribe to the channel. Um, help me out a little bit. I'm going to try to do as many of these as I can. There's some weeks I just can't do them. Some days I can knock them out every day. But uh, hang with me. We'll try to get it together. My the other story here is this Aruga Unitrack. Uh, this is actually just a drawing, I believe. I haven't seen the real version. Uh, however, they have this here. Um, and I guess this is maybe the first one. This is a year old video. But uh, if this one's the one coming, I mean, that's interesting. It's only got a, a three meter turning radius, which me is not the greatest. I believe that's nine feet. I don't know. It might not be too bad, but uh, you steer differently. But it's kind of hard looking. This one is a hybrid electric. It's got sort of a fuel way to power up the batteries. Uh, we'll get into that just a little bit. New fuel sale in the United States: eighty-five million dollar investment at the end of. End of diesel. I don't believe it's to be the end of diesel, but the thing about hydrogen power is that it's going to be competition to diesel and gasoline at the pump. That means you might see your diesel and gas prices come down a little bit because we're we're pulling away from them with some of this hydrogen, which will be probably a lot cheaper. Can't guarantee it. It'll be a hopefully a, a way to lower your prices. Myriad owners sue Toyota over failure of hydrogen technology. Now, this is the problem with these hydrogen fuel cells and everything that's, that's happening, is that these car companies aren't trying to get a hydrogen uh, fuel pump at their dealership. You, know, you got to think, most of these dealerships are in every county. And that would be the easiest way to to get people interested, and they're, they're just not doing it. And with the money they've got, the fact that they haven't really thought about this yet, it's kind of embarrassing, believe it or not. Uh, we'll hit a few articles here. House set on to vote on foreign aid bills for Ukraine, Israel, Israel and Taiwan. Third Republican joins efforts to house speaker, putting in real peril. Dems at war, blah, blah, blah. It's basically the same. Drudge Report. Uh, I just really didn't find those stories on here. When I looked through it earlier, I'm not sure things change. But uh, more, more vote stuff. I'm not. I don't even vote anymore. It's just not worth it. If you have votes, you want to vote locally. Everything's uh, decided in the uh, electoral college anyway. So whoever has the most amount of senators. That's who's going to be the president. I haven't even looked to see who it is. I don't even care. It's all rigged. So looky here, Boeing has many goals for the next decade. I bet they do. Uh, the chief technical officer, Todd Seiton, of the manufacturer, wants to build flying cars and enter Asia by 2030. And yeah, make sure you get them over in Asia. We don't probably want these here. Boeing is having some issues with their own little Jetliners revealed exclusively to Nikkei the plan will address the growing demand for fast, short distance travel in areas where traffic grids and cities mean, mean smooth transportation is possible. This will be part of their mission to use more air to cut journey time. Now, I doubt it'll be anything more than a flying taxi. Yeah, taxi like device will focus on vertical takeoff. You know, I'm more interested in my own personal air vehicle. PAV. It can be pulled off. The manufacturer will look to boost the service to their location for flying car devices. I would probably not buy a Boeing, and I probably wouldn't get in the taxi just knowing all the crap they've been going through. However, with that said, a lot of those airplanes are average 18 years old, and they don't really 
really say how old these planes are that are falling apart. Are they 18 years old? Are they, are they right off the assembly line? And I haven't really caught too much of it. 2019, Boeing competed the first test flight of the autonomous passenger air vehicle in Virginia using Pacific electric propulsion. A total 30-foot prototype was able to complete vertical takeoffs and landings within a range of some 50 miles. At the time, Boeing clearly said this was the future and would look to advance the project to larger rollout in the cargo space and more. I'm going to try to use Japan as a hub. While many onlookers have long dreamed of a device such as a flying taxi to simplify journeys to get cars off the road to ease congestion, many logistical barriers in place will need to be figured out. Additionally, onlookers have shared their concerns about the project, given what Boeing has experienced recently, quality issues and immense backlash. Yeah, that's analysts in Boeing may, however, argue that separate divisions are continuously working and not necessarily affected by the latest quality issues. Additionally, Boeing must continue looking toward new areas, markets, and ideas to ensure that it remains at the forefront of the business, even if the commercial sector is struggling. Well, I mean, you're really going to have to rebuild your, rebrand your name or change your name or something if you, before you produce these. I don't know. I'd take the Boeing off of it. <laughs> That's for sure. The Aruga. Adventure bikes don't get any more adventure than this. It is called the Aruga Unitrack, and it might just be the coolest and wildest bike of 24. I mean, it is pretty fucking cool. If this thing does roll off and gets built. I mean, that's kind of badass, really. Um, it's been designed by Latvian team, which is claiming the bike to be the world's first all-terrain monotrack, or at least it will be when it goes into production in 2025. As you can guess from the E and the E monotrack, the bike is electric powered, all the press release accompanying it mentions hybrid. Whether that's a range extending hybrid, whereas a petrol or diesel engine helps to keep the batteries topped up, or as a traditional hybrid where the internal combustion engine powers to be tracked, remains to be seen. Aruga is the process of building the first example of the fully electric. Keeping with the brand's ethos of the machine that is green, innovative, and sustainable. The powering machine is a 90 kilowatt motor with quite a lot of power for an electric bike, that is, quite a bit. We expect the torque figure to be even more impressive with two versions to offer the 150 kilogram heavy, heavyweight, 300 kilogram, it will likely need some chunky load and grunt. Uh, the claimed range of the machine is either 62 miles is fully electric or 124 miles is using hybrid technology. It's claimed that it's going to have a top speed of around 60 miles an hour. Well, top speed on a bike like this is kind of irrelevant. Yeah, that is true. Uh, it is, though, the design of the track gives the bike its genius go anywhere ability, not the motor or battery. Large, much larger contact patch. Where's the turning radius? Uh, okay, but handling sand, deep motor rocky climb, traditional motorcycle, yeah. On the rock. Uh, I see it say, well, I, I thought it said, it said three kilometers somewhere. Three meters, I'm sorry, which is like nine foot. That's the turning radius on it. Now you can kind of stop it, probably kick it right around, but you got some speed going, you probably want to have the ability to do a good turn. Okay, new fuel in the United States, $85 million investment. GM and Honda have developed a new fuel cell and all the details about its innovation. New fuel technology enhances the mapping more than 300 miles in partnership with the system is committed to the goal of bringing down the cost of fuel cell electric vehicles and making them more usable for the end user. I disagree. I think the goal is to make the price of gasoline and diesel go down, which is going to get you cheaper electric and, and cheaper uh, uh, fuel. And I think that's what the goal should be, is to challenge these other ones. 
the aim is to set an end of diesel with this new fuel in the United States. Uh, it's supposedly green. I've heard some people say otherwise. That doesn't really bother me so much. It's just the price of this fuel that we're using. This could really kind of help take that out. Here you have the future in Japanese. The future is pretty bleak with Toyota. Made a big bet that hydrogen was the future of driving, naming its first hydrogen fuel powered Nigeria, which seemed to fit the move for its huge ambition. Things haven't worked out that well as early adapters found out that Nigeria was an ideal future so many wanted to be. In fact, the crumbling infrastructure and depreciation have some owners calling a Toyota for a buyback and even filing lawsuits over their experience. Today, many of them are furious feeling deceived over buying a car they felt had immense potential, but never got the fueling infrastructure necessary to back it up. Yeah, and it, I mean, I don't know how they haven't figured it out. And you have to have some way to fuel these things nationwide, and the best way to do it is through a dealership, in my opinion. Uh, Back to the judge thing again. I, again, I, I hate politics. Makes me angry when I really look at it. So there's Boeing, Yoruga, that new fuel cell. That's pretty small. I mean, that could fit in the engine compartment of your car. Here's that story about hydrogen. Remember, you know, they these things need to have infrastructure. And uh, that's about it, guys. Good luck.